Excellent. So uh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to speak with you, uh, Raul Bowles. I I'm very excited about this. Um, I was able to see your uh, new movie, Berlin. It's really, really good. <laughs> you sound very surprised. No, I'm not very surprised, um, but I'm just excited. Wow, your picture is going in and out of focus. It's messing with my head. Oh, okay. Um, give me one second. Is this better? Yes. Okay, great. Now... Um, Raul, you've, you've had such a really diverse career, right? You've gone from acting to directing and even rugby. Um, how do your experiences in all these different creative fields influence the way you approach a role like you had in Berlin? No, they don't. All my years of playing rugby for India, all my years of uh, spending time in hospital after all those games, all my years of uh, leading teams, all my years of uh, losses and victories and now being the president of the National Rugby Federation has done nothing uh, for me as an actor. Um, they're separate. However, if you live life uh, as a sentient human being with observation, empathy, uh, curiosity, that's pretty good prep for an actor. <laughs> well... This this film, Berlin, it's really interesting to me. It offers a really unique take on the spy genre, especially with this spo uh, focus on, on, you know, sign language and and deaf, uh, hard, uh, eh, audibly impaired actors. Uh, how do you think this film reshapes the traditional uh, espionage story? And what excited you about being part of this project? So I think that there have been films, uh, spy thrillers that are also psychological explorations with a lot of interiority in them and a lot of silences, a lot of shades of gray. Best uh, example is Smiley's People, uh, 2012, John Le Carre's, based on his novel, or The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. All of John Le Carre's movies, uh, books on the, of the Smiley series are deeply evocative of what Berlin is trying to do. I don't know whether you're familiar with this writer or familiar with his books or familiar with the movies that have been made from his books, but that's, that's a... It's an, it, that genre exists. This genre is not about somebody out to ruin the world or take over the world and a good guy, David versus Goliath. This is not about snowboarding in Sicily, not that you can, and killing 10 people and the next day you're jetting off to Croatia to land on an iceberg on your fingertip and kill somebody with the third tooth of your upper upper molar, you know. It's not that either, right? So I think that it this is this belongs to the nothing much is happening, but it's really really interesting. And who are these people? And who do I back? Who do I put my money on? Who's going to win this race? And there's no identifiable world dominating villain, but the villain is there, but is very shadowy. So it's psychological. It's it's a who done it meets a psychological thriller. Well, with the movie being set in the 1990s, um, New Delhi specifically, how does the film's uh, historical backdrop um, enhance the narrative? And, and what do you hope audiences take away from this? I believe the backdrop enhances the narrative artistically and gives a certain frisson of, um, you know, it's kind of cool. Uh, that's pretty much it. The story would be equally relevant today. Audiences, I believe, will take away exactly what I took away from it. I get bored really easily. I'm like, no, it's not a boring film. This actually goes by attention. Performances are good. It looks good. It's shot well. It's designed well. People, no, it's it's got some some design harmony happening in it, and uh, it it doesn't it doesn't sag for even two or three minutes. It's not a, it's not a pick up your mobile phone, send a message, and go back to it. Uh, there are so many silences. I always believe cinema needs to be watched, not to be heard. I'm not a great fan of the talk, 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 talk American films that came out in the 90s and 2000s where you just, you can literally, you can be cooking and you can follow the whole story because everybody's talking all the time. Uh, I'm a great fan of movies that demand to be watched and not just to be heard. 
how did your experience as a director um, inform your role when approaching your character in this film? Anthony, the only thing that comes into my mind, and I never ever wear my director's hat, never take it onto set with me as an actor. Never. Um, that would be fatal. Or even when I'm reading it. But what, what a director's hat does do when you're preparing for a role is you can see the world faster than anybody else. You can understand the pacing better than anybody else. You have an idea what the edit is going to look like more than anybody else. You can hear the music. You know, you you can you, you can start to put things together, which might not be entirely accurate as a end result, but it helps you see it in its entirety and where you belong in it. Okay. Well, you've worn many hats and you've portrayed a variety of characters over the years. Um, did Berlin push you out of your comfort zone at all? Did you learn anything about yourself while filming this? I think the mixture of insecurity, fear, and self-loathing. This is a character, if you want to really unlock this character, he hates himself. He doesn't know it. He hasn't introspected enough to know it. But he hates himself. And everything he does is with a violence and a kind of grudge against the world. It's only people who hate themselves that that aren't at peace with everything around them. That's very interesting. Okay. So what was it like working with your co-stars? What was what type of dynamic did you guys have on set? And what were you able to do to help bring that wonderful chemistry that you had with everyone? 15 years ago, I decided that I would not do movies with people who are morally compromised human beings, not nice people. You know, it's not worth it. That's not what I signed up for when I was six years old and I went on stage and I loved, just loved, I, I said, I'm home. And so I'm not ever going to, I'm not going to ever mess with the sanctity and the beauty and the sheer pleasure of that. And I find when I work with unpleasant people, people with different agendas, people with complicated uh, personas, complicated is fine, but complex and uh, antagonistic and all of that, it just saps my soul. It takes the fun out of what I do. So Apar and Ishwak, Apar Shakti Kurana and Ishwak Singh are really good human beings apart from being fine actors. So we had the most terrific time on the set because everybody was giving and taking and it was very intense. There was no ha ha ha, laugh out loud, funny moments, but we just enjoyed the richness and the depth of what we were doing so much. And the trust was 100%. What else can you ask for? That's amazing to hear. I'm, I'm really, really happy to hear that. Um, I know you're busy, so I'll, I'll try to wrap up. Um, working for so long, being in this industry for so long, I imagine that that's got to bring a lot of pressure. Who was your unsung hero of your career? Who was the person that helped keep you grounded and focused in the trajectory of your career? Nobody. Nobody. Okay. Nobody. I haven't spoken to anybody. I haven't asked anybody for any help. I haven't been to any mental crises. I, I work on myself. Of course, I draw from the intellect and stubbornness of Mahatma Gandhi. I draw from the empathy and the warmth of uh, Mother Teresa. I draw from the sense of humor of Mandela. I draw from the genuine self-effacing humility of the Dalai Lama. I mean, that, come on, you could, you know, you could pick from anybody, right? Hey. I, I, I get, I draw from the sense of humor of a famous writer, lyricist called Javed Aksar in India. I draw from the incredible softness and kindness of a heart from Shravara Azmi. Like you can draw little, little slivers of little colors from it and build your own rainbow. So that's what I've done. I just built my own rainbow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's inspiring. I'm so sorry, but we request you to take your last question. We kind of short in time. No problem. Um, so thank you again so much for your time. Are there any other projects, anything else that you want to uh, introduce to your audiences here in the United States when we're watching your films? Is there anything we can look forward to seeing you in next? Uh, no, I have five films coming out, but I don't know whether any of them will have an international release. It's too early to tell. Uh, but one Hindi film with Aparshwakti's brother, Ayushman Khurana, equally fine actor and equally fine human being, that is 
it's not, and it runs that, you know, have you seen True Lies? The kind of film that runs the razor's edge between being a thriller and a spoof. You know, it's like that. So I'm looking forward to that one. It has it doesn't have a name as yet. It'll come out sometime late next year, but that's a good one to watch out for. Very excited for that. Thank you so much for your time. Anthony Thank with the movie blog. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.